everybody. Hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. I just made the cutest little oven mitt pot holder from Designs by Juju. And I customized it so it says Becky's Kitchen on each side. Isn't that cool? Look at that. This is really neat. I am like it so much. I've got one. I need to make another and I thought I'd take you along with me for the ride when I do that. Let me start off by saying, if you hear a bunch of drilling and banging and things going on in the background, I apologize, but my husband is in full remodel mode on my new sewing studio uh, in another room in the house. So he's been at it all day, so there's no quiet time to make a video. So before we get started on this, there's a couple of things that I want to mention that if you want to do it along with me, that can help make your life a lot easier and you'll have a, a good chance of success with your cool little oven mitt. The very first thing I recommend you do after purchasing the file is to print out your instructions. It is 10 pages and I did mine on draft on my printer in color with uh, printing on both sides so it took up just five sheets of paper and it was a pretty quick printout. The instructions have everything that you need to make this right from start to finish. I do want to point out one thing that confused me and I finally figured it out. In your list of supplies, it has a supply list with wash away stabilizer, insole bright, warm and natural fabrics, uh, your scissors, embroidery thread, washi tape, and pins. Now, the steps in this one. This is the set one. This is the oval and the rectangle. In the instructions on page two, the word batting right here on the fourth line right there actually goes up here in the line above it. So this is not a piece of batting that you're going to cut that is seven by ten. This should read like pockets, two pieces, five by seven of warm and natural or other low loft batting. And then pot holder pad top, you need one piece of fabric that is seven by 10. Both of them are like that. So I just wanna show you guys and hope that um, it's not confusing to you. So it talks about what you need when you make these pot holders. There are two different kinds of insulated batting that you can get to make these and they are, are just a little bit different in in what they are I don't have the package for this one anymore this is called insole bright and insole bright looks like it and you can hear it it kind of crinkles can you hear that it looks like it has a little piece of aluminum foil that runs through the middle of it. This works wonderful. This is what is recommended uh, by the by Designs by Juju. By its very nature of having foil inside of it, you cannot put this in the microwave. They make another batting that is called wrap and zap. And the zap part means you can zap it in the microwave. This is also another very good batting that you can use in this project. It's a little bit thicker than this one, but it will work just the same. This is all I have left after cutting the piece that I need for my other pot holder. So uh, I was fortunate just to get enough of this. I have not noticed that my needle dulls at all going through this as an embroidery project. If you are concerned about that, just keep some extra needles on hand, okay? But the wrap and zap, you can use, and you'll just have a, a little bit thicker, you'll have a little bit thicker pot holder. The instructions also call for a wash away stabilizer. Now there's a lot of different kinds of wash away stabilizers. There are some like this, this is Solvi, water state water soluble stabilizer and it it looks almost like a like a plastic this is really good if you're going to be making patches you can use this if this is all that you have that's fine you can use it there is another kind of this is again solvy water soluble stabilizer and it looks almost like the glad press and seal that's what it looks like it's not clingy like saran wrap, but it feels like 
glad press and seal. This is what is called a topper and you would use this over something that has a very high nap like a towel or a hoodie or something like that, a sweatshirt. This won't work for what you need. It just doesn't have it doesn't have the um, the strength to handle the heavy stitch around the outside that's going to happen. This will just shred. This kind of water soluble stabilizer is designed to be laid on top of like a monogram on a towel or something like that. So if you have this kind of water soluble stabilizer, it won't work. There is another kind of water soluble stabilizer and it's called a fibrous water soluble stabilizer. Or you might see the initials WSS. That's what that means, water soluble stabilizer. This is a fibrous water soluble stabilizer. It's opaque. It feels like sew-in pillon like you might have in a collar or something on a fitted shirt, but this is the kind of stabilizer that will work. This actually has a title called Villene. It's V-I-L-E-N-E, -E, I believe it is called, V-I-L-E-N-E, -E, water soluble embroidery. You would use this for freestanding lace. This is the kind that I used. However, I did not use this particular roll. If you don't have this, there is a, a Pellon product that works very well, and that's what I used in mine right here, in this one, and it is called 541 Wash and Gone Stabilizer, right here, 541 Wash and Gone. You can get this at Walmart. It's four or five dollars, I think. It's, it's not much at all. They have it on the wall back with all of their stabilizers, 541 Wash and Gone. Uh, I buy this two or three packs at a time because I'm always using it. So those are some options uh, just to it kind of explain the differences with the water soluble stabilizer. I recommend that you use what is called a fibrous water soluble stabilizer. You're going to need it. This is done in two separate hoopings and on the second hooping they recommend that you use two layers of water soluble stabilizer. Well, I don't do that. After I cut out the, the piece from the first hooping, the extra water soluble stabilizer that's out on the sides, I just kind of lay that on top of the, the hoop for the second hooping and that way I get the two layers. So I'm kind of patchwork piecing it. It's fine, it's not seen and it, it works really, really well. The fabric line I am using is from a, a Fat Quarter bundle that I got in not too long ago. If you watch my channel, you might have seen me uh, show it to you guys. It's called Summersville from Maywood Studio. This is sitting in my, in my stash back here, and it's so pretty, and I thought, why am I just looking at that every time I walk by it, and why don't I put it to good use? So I pulled out a couple of Fat Quarters out of it, and that is what I use. So these are, I used a total of three coordinating Fat Quarters for my fabrics. So this is the floral piece here, and then the coordinating stripe, and of course the pretty back. This is the focus fabric. And then I grabbed some black scraps that I had in my stash as the lining, those are the liner pieces. I will tell you, when I cut this uh, this piece right here, which is the top of the pad itself on the second hooping, when I cut it, I cut the stripe the wrong direction. So it would have been going, uh, the stripe would have been going this way instead of vertically this way. And that wasn't the look I was going for. So I, I sewed my piece to another piece to make it long enough and you will see when I put this on, I'm gonna make sure that this little seam right here where I sewed it, because I did it to both of them, you know, I'm consistent that way. <laughs> but the seam where I put it, let me see where it is. You can't even tell, it's way down up under here. So I'm gonna make sure that the seam cannot be seen from the outside in this little piece right here. But that's why I've got a big old chunk right here is because I had to add some extra to it since I uh, got confused on my cutting. That's okay, nobody will know but you and me. Also, look at this big, this is a big heavy satin stitch all around the outside here. I would recommend whatever thread color that you choose for your outside satin stitch, you have a Sharpie of the same color. If there's any fabric at all showing through on the back all around, you're going to want to color that in. It's just going to make your project look a lot look a lot better. 
This stitching is good. It's tight. It does make a very, very nice satin stitch all the way around. But if you have a bright fabric and you've got dark thread or whatever, I mean, you, I could see little bitty dots of the orange through the black. And uh, that way I've got them all, all very nice. See that? Sharpies are an embroiderer's friend. Now I customized this with Becky's Kitchen using Embrilliance Essential software. And I'm gonna show you how to do that here in just a minute. The directions suggest that you use a bobbin thread the same color as your top thread. Here's the front, right? But there's the back and you can see the black right here. This is the bobbin thread. And then also the all over quilting stitching. See that, that is also bobbin thread. To do that, I just filled a couple of bobbins with the exact same thread that I'm using in the top thread in the machine. That worked fine. I didn't have any problems at all. And I don't think you will either. Most embroidery machines, while I traditionally will use a 90 weight thread, lot lighter thread in the, in the embroidery machine, I just use a standard uh, embroidery weight thread and it worked fine. Okay, so that's all I've got to talk to you about uh, to give you some tips and tricks there. And let's get over to Embrilliance and I will show you what you need to do to customize your oven mitt. When you open the Embrilliance Essentials software, you'll be presented with a plain screen like this. And you would want to find your hoop size and you want to set your hoop so that you can make sure everything's going to fit just right. And to do that, you need to come up to edit up in the top left corner up here. And you want to go to preferences, which is at the bottom of the list and click preferences where it says format. Whatever format your embroidery machine takes, you want to find that and click it. And then a list of standard hoops for your machine will come up and you can uh, go through them and find the one. And if you're not sure on the millimeters, look down here at the bottom of this little window and it'll tell you approximately what size it is in inches. If the hoop that you have is not listed here, you can click new and then you can put in a name and give it a width and a height in millimeters and tell it okay. I am using the nine by 14 right here. And even though it says to use the six by 10, I do not have a six by 10. So I'm going to the next size up that I have that where the design will fit. And I'm gonna click apply and okay. And there is my nine by 14 hoop. You can scroll in Embrilliance by coming over here on the right. If you don't have a mouse wheel, if you don't have a little wheel on your mouse where you can roll the wheel and make it go bigger or smaller, you can grab this little slider bar and you can drag it like this and make it get bigger or smaller. You can go way big and you can go way far out. All right, so I need to get the first hooping into the Embrilliance window. There's a lot of different ways. You can go file, open. You can click the open icon and it'll want to know what you want to open. You can come down to the bottom taskbar and click on the little folder. And this is the way I like to do it. Every computer will have a documents folder, a picture library and videos and whatnot. In my documents, I have a folder and it will open up over here in a quick, this is where you can uh, choose things quickly. In my documents, I have a folder called embroidery. And if you would like to make a folder, you can come over here on the side somewhere right click and go to new and folder. And then you can create your own folder. I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna to go to my embroidery and inside of embroidery, I have a folder called kitchen. I file all of my embroidery designs kind of like a card catalog, if you remember at the library and these are filed by subject. So I'm gonna go down to kitchen, there it is. And in kitchen, I have oven mitt. And so that you can see this a little bit better, I'm gonna come up to view and I'm gonna to go to large icons. There we go. 
And there is the Becky's Kitchen that I just made. So I want to customize another one. I'm going to make it say something different. The reason you can see these as pictures is because I have another piece of Embrilliant software on my computer that is called Thumbnailer. And Thumbnailer allows you to see your embroidery designs like little pictures in your pictures folder. So it's very, very handy. You do not need Embrilliant's essential software in order to run Thumbnailer on your system. It is a separate utility that will work on either a Windows or a Mac machine. So what I'm going to do is just grab this one. This is the first hooping and I'm going to drag it into the window. To customize this, I'm going to roll in just a little bit. And over here on the right, this is called the objects panel. And I'm going to click this little plus sign right here. And this plus sign will open up when you click it. And if you click on a particular line item, it will show you which stitch that is in the stitch sequence. Each one you do, see it kind of it bolds it and highlights it. And we're going to go to the next one. There we go. Just like that. And you can see every one of these as it goes through the stitch sequence. Now to customize this, up here in the top menu, there is a little letter A right here. And I want to click that letter and it says create letters. Down below the objects panel in properties, there is right here a little text box and that will come up and by default it says ABC. And in here you can click this and I will link to a video below on how to import BX fonts into Embrilliance. I really like the font that I have right now. I'm going to keep this maybe at a one inch. This Beatrice, one inch. And I'm going to, if you click off of it and it's not highlighted anymore, just click back on the letters and there we go. And then come over here and highlight ABC. And I'm going to type the word hot and hit enter. Maybe I need this to be a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go to the Beatrice two inch. There we go, that looks good. And I'm going to put my cursor on it and I'm going to drag it down. And when you let go, there are slider bars right here on the side. When you let go, see these center black uh, handles right here? You can use your arrow keys and get those exactly right here on a line in the middle. Or if you have Embrilliance Enthusiast, you'll have a precise positioning system up here that you can use. So that looks pretty good. I want to curve this just a little bit. So I'm going to click on this uh, circle right here, text on a circle, and I'm going to scroll on this radius like that. And that looks pretty neat. I like that. I'm going to click off. Yeah, that looks really good. Okay. So now I'm going to scroll up here and I'm going to click the letter A again. And I'm going to highlight over the text ABC and I'm going to type stuff. Hot stuff. <laughs> How about that? Or I think I like that better. Now that I've figured out how I want my letters to customize it, I need to make sure that the letters stitch out in the proper order after the all over quilting stitching right here. So to do that, I'm going to highlight the letters that say hot and not on the blue part, but over here on the little picture, I'm going to grab it with my mouse and I'm going to drag it up and hover it over the all over stitching up here. You want to hover it over the one that you want it to stitch out. So there is the all over stitching right there, and then it's going to stitch hot. And then it's going to do 
the line for the trim on the pocket. So on this one now, I need it to stitch. I need the, these letters stuff to stitch after the Oliver quilting. So I'm going to grab this and hover it over that and then it falls underneath it and then it's going to do its last stitch. I am ready to send this over to the Luminaire wirelessly. You can do this on the Brother Luminaire or the Baby Lock Solaris. And to do that, you come up and click Utility and scroll down to Send to Solaris XP1. The XP1 is the Brother Luminaire. It will also work with the XP2 upgrade kit. I'm going to click that. It wants a title, and I'm going to call it Mitt Hot Stuff. It doesn't like spaces in there, so if you want to separate words, you would use a dash or an underscore and click OK. And you get a message that says result, file sent to the machine. Tell it OK. If you do not have wireless capability, you want to save it to a USB stick so that you can take it over to your machine. You will come up here and go file, save stitch file as. First of all, you want to up here in the top, save as and I'm going to click this and find the USB drive. And then down here, you want to use this drop down arrow right here and scroll to find your machine file type. And Brilliance works with every single type of home embroidery machine. So I'm going to choose PES and I'm going to call it Mitt Hot Stuff and save. Now, I also want to send part two over there. There's no customization that needs to be done to part two of the embroidery, the second hooping. So I'm going to just right here, I'm going to click up in the top, the new icon. You can either go file, new, but I'm an icon girl. So I'm just going to click new and it opens a new one up. I'm going to scroll down here to my oven mitt and I'm going to grab this rectangle. This is the back half of the rectangle one, and I'm going to drag it up here and drop it in. And then again, utility, send to Solaris XP1, and I'm going to call it MIT back and tell it OK. File sent to the machine. Perfect. And tell it OK. Likewise, you would go file, save stitch file as, and you can save it here in the USB drive, or if you want to, you can certainly in this window over here in the quick uh, select, you can just scroll down to your USB drive and you can grab it and drag it over there and hover it over USB and there it goes and it saved it and that's it. So if I click on the USB now, there they both are. Okay, we are ready to stitch this out. Okay, to make this project, you are going to need your instructions. The instructions say to use a six by 10 hoop. I do not have a six by 10 hoop. I have a nine by 14 hoop, so that's what I'm using. You're going to need two pieces of fibrous water soluble stabilizer. There's my two pieces right there. This is for the first hooping and this is for the second hooping. For the pockets, you're going to need two pieces of outer fabric and two pieces of lining fabric. You're going to need two pieces of batting. This is Hobbs 8020. You can use warm and natural. You can use a poly, but I recommend that you use it that has a low loft. You don't want something super puffy. That'll work just fine. You're going to need some tape for embroidery. I will link to this below. You're going to need bobbin thread, the exact same color as your top thread. You're going to need some curved embroidery scissors to be able to trim in the hoop. And for your second hooping, you will need a piece of either Insole Bright or Wrap and Zap. You're going to need fabric for the back of the pot holder, and you're going to need fabric for inside the pot holder. I recommend also that you have a Sharpie that is the same color as your all over stitching, and you're going to need some pins. And that's it. So we're ready to go to the machine. All right, at the Luminaire, I'm going to touch the screen to activate it. And I'm going to touch embroidery. And at this main screen, it wants to know where do you want to get your design from. There are designs that are internal to the machine, and that is what all of these are. And down here is the little pocket for memory. I'm going to touch the pocket. And if I had a USB stick in it, I could touch USB. Uh, you could get it from a chip, but I'm going to go to the wireless icon and touch that. 
and then I'm going to scroll down and look for, oh, there's my hot stuff oven mitt right there. Touch that and set. And that's it. We are all ready to go. I'm going to touch embroidery and it's ready to begin stitching. I have placed my colored bobbin in the machine, or back on there, and I'm going to put in my hoop. Whenever you take the hoop in and out of your machine, you want to put your hand on it right here, and so if you push hard, you don't shove the embroidery arm out of uh, where it needs to be. It says the carriage of the unit will move. Keep your hands away from the carriage. I'm gonna tell it okay. And the very first thing it's going to do is stitch a placement line for the batting. So I'm going to just press the green button and go. And you're gonna to wanna to take your batting and place it right over those lines. If your batting has little scrim on the back, like little bumps, put those down. If you make a mistake and forget to do that, that's okay, don't worry about it, it's no big deal. And now it is going to tack down the batting. All right, now it's time to put down the main fabric for the pocket. Just put this over and make sure it just sticks there. If you like, you can take some tape and tape it down on the outer edges. The batting has a pretty good hold on that cotton fabric, so I'm just going to put that on there and let it tack down. And now it's going to do the all over quilting stitches. Okay, it is time to stitch out the customization. So I'm going to remove my hoop and I'm going to switch out my bobbin just to make sure I don't get any kind of orange uh, bobbin thread showing from the back. Not that it will, but just to be sure and I'm going to switch out my threads now. I just tie the existing threads together. I kind of give them a little twist and I make a single knot and pull the tails through that little single hole and tie it like that. And then I pull the thread from in front of the needle, grab it from in front of the needle and pull it through until the little knot comes through. There we go. Put the hoop back in the machine. If you are not doing any customizing, then at this step, you're going to want to take your embroidery scissors and you're going to want to trim just, there is that stitch line that just got made right here. You're going to want to trim the batting and the fabric right at that stitch line. And this is what your curved embroidery scissors are so good for. But you wanna trim this right here. This is the next step. This is if you are not customizing. But I'm gonna go ahead and do it now. But the next step that I'm gonna have will be doing the lettering. And this is gonna take three minutes. The next stitch is the uh, tack down for the, this is the pocket lining and mine is gonna be black. And you wanna make sure to have trimmed this right here because this is the alignment spot for that pocket lining right there. You don't want it over it. It's just gonna go right there. Okay, now it's going to stitch the exact same thing again on the second pocket for the oven mitt. I'm gonna change out my bobbin back to the original thread color. Okay, uh, it's time for the customization again on this half.
Okay, we're all finished with this hooping. That was pretty simple. That was pretty simple. All right, I'm gonna take this out and we need to remove it from the hoop. So I normally tell y'all to use the quilters cut and press in order to uh, trim things in your hoop and it's around here somewhere. So what I am going to do though is I'm going to, I, I have a, a Wooly Betty, Steady Betty, Wooly Betty, Steady Wooly Betty. My dog has her baby and she's fixing to head out the door. So what you need to do now is not necessary but helpful is a pair of duck build scissors. I will link to these below. And you want to get in here and trim away your <laughs> squeaky baby. You want to get in here and trim away. Okay, you want to trim away your stabilizer. Now, I'm going to trim this fairly close to the design because I'm going to use this big piece right here as uh, the second piece of stabilizer that the directions call for in the second hooping. I'm going to use this half and then on the other end I'll use the other half and kind of piece them together and nobody will know the difference because it'll be inside the uh, inside the design. This right here you want to trim away that pocket lining right there. I'm going to trim that away but don't cut through the stitching. Just it removes some of the bulk and then you would want to take this over to your ironing board and you can finger press or iron all right and it's going to fold over like this. And for a good look, you just want to make sure that the amount that you have over here on this end and the amount on this end, right over, right over where this, uh, these stitching lines are right here, that, that line of stitching, you want to make sure that they're about the same. And press it if you need to, but that's, that's the look you're going for right there. Or if it's upside down, that's the look you're going for. <laughs> yeah, you just want it to look uniform. You want that. You just don't want to. Let me let me let me do it wrong so you can see. I'm exaggerating for effect, but see how there's too much over here and not enough over there, and it doesn't look right. You want that. You want that black edging, or whatever color you're using. You want that edging to look uniform from end to end. That looks pretty good. All right. I'm going to do the other one. This looks good. All right, we are ready to do the second hooping. As close as you can. I'm making a video! <laughs> husband watch Fisherman's Friends on Netflix and now all he can do is go around singing fishing shanty songs. <laughs> oh, never a dull moment at the Thompson house. 